we are live. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my weekly live stream where I talk about the new beauty releases. Um, yeah, so in a short moment, we will be chatting about the new beauty releases. I'm going to share my screen with you on Instagram and we're going to go through every single thing that has been released over the last week. And we're going to talk about, just give me one second. <laughs> okay i had a heater on and it was still going even though i turned it off um what was i gonna say uh we're going to be talking about every single thing that has been announced sneak peek to launch over the last week on instagram so i do follow a few pages on instagram i follow kat and Haley from beauty news um i also follow trend mood and i also follow indie makeup spotlight which is run by Amy from the channel Amy Loves Makeup here on YouTube. Um, housekeeping, uh, I have a few things to just housekeeping about this week. Um, as per usual, I'll do my disclaimer here. Um, sometimes people can find these videos a little bit negative when they're watching the replay back. That's because we are highly critical here about makeup. We're highly critical about makeup here on my channel. Um, we are all trying to save money. We're all got things going on at the moment, um, you know, the, the dreaded virus is also affecting a lot of people's um, financials. So we're all trying to be a lot smarter about what we're buying. So that is why we are highly critical. So if you don't like hearing people talk about badly about your favorite YouTubers, collaboration, your favorite brand, anything like that, if you feel personally attacked when someone is negatively talking about your favorite brand, don't watch this video, but if you do want to learn how to have a critical eye of, about things and how to be more analytical and critical of the new releases coming out, then this is definitely the place for you. Housekeeping for my members for today. Now, I did add in some custom emojis um, over the past couple of days. So if you are a member, you do have access to those custom emojis. So if you do hit the little, um, I think it's like a little smiley face um, down the bottom of your of your um, chat box, it'll pop up and you'll get to see all the custom emojis there that you can use as we were chatting along. I'm so excited for you guys to, to use them. Um, I was having a great time creating them yesterday. So um, make sure you use them as we go through if you are a member. And if you do want to have access to those custom emojis, you do need to join, unfortunately, and all those details are down below. Um, if you click the join button, you can find all that information out. That's all the housekeeping for today. Um, so I'm just going to share my Instagram screen with you and then we will start chatting away about all the new beauty releases. Let me jump on over to this screen and bring up the Beauty News Instagram page. Alrighty. There's been a few bits and pieces that has released this week. Um, not much I'm very interested in, though, which I guess we're probably not all that surprised about. Um, where did we get up to? I think we got up to here last week. Um, firstly, before we start, we have Carolyn here. Good morning to you, beautiful. And Alice has also joined us. It is so good to see both of you here this morning. Um, excited to talk about you, beauty releases. <laughs> Okay, so M Cosmetics has added some new shades to their Color Drop Serum blushes. They've added four new shades. So they've taken their range from four to eight, which is a pretty decent expansion, I think, when it comes to cream blushes. So we've added Peachy Peach, Venetian Rose, Little Lilac, and Cherry Splash. Now, I love these two colors in the middle. Um, I think they're beautiful. I think this Venetian Rose would be a really nice, natural, like nudie blush kind of color. And then Lilac, I just love a good purple blush moment. So I really like both of these colors. And these do come off quite like natural and glowy on the skin. So as per usual, I am super keen to try these blushes when I make an M Cosmetics order eventually. I am I'm committed to making one this year at some point. But these are always out of stock. So um, maybe the next like big re, re like restock of all these blushes, I might make an order then, um, so I can get like 
uh, a number of di the different colors but some of the colors that I really want to try are out of stock at the moment so that's the reason why I haven't had a chance to make an order yet and they do take a little bit um, longer to restock these blushes unfortunately so I am always keeping an eye out to see when the ones that I want come back in stock but I definitely really like these I mean I probably <laughs> I'm very tempted to just buy all of the colors to try them but that's eight brand new blushes bringing into my collection, but I could definitely use these in my makeup kit, I think. So either way, I would get use out of them. I think that they're beautiful. The formula, every time I hear people talk about the formula, it just sounds beautiful. So I'm definitely keen to try these. I am very glad that they're adding more shades and expanding their range. And yeah, my eye is always on M Cosmetics. Okay, we're gonna kick off the first rant of the morning because I don't like this. <laughs> this is the new, this is the actual makeup collection coming out from One Size, which is Patrick Starr's brand. Um, I don't like this. <laughs> I, I just, I don't get it. I don't, I just, I just am really, really underwhelmed by this palette uh i think it's beautiful i think the way it's laid out is really nice like the the columns make sense like you can work with the columns um there's some some nice colors in there definitely but i just i'm just very underwhelmed for this to be a first palette from a brand i'm very underwhelmed um i just think it looks very similar to other palettes i've seen the palettes that i see when i look at this are the morphe and coca-cola palette and um, what's the other palette that I heard? I heard someone else compare this to um, another palette the other day too. And I was like, yes, it looks exactly like that. Um, but definitely, I definitely see the Morphe and Coca-Cola palette when I look at this color story. I think the Morphe palette was a little bit more like that silvery tone, but I definitely get those vibes when I look at this. And I just think, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just think it's boring and it's that typical, I mean, we do have a few like olive khaki kind of colors in here, but it is that last year's palette of a um, neutral palette with a pop of blue and we're so over it. And I think maybe this really shows when Patrick started working on his, his line because back, I guess, when he started looking at starting this palette and working on this palette, the neutral palette with a pop of blue was still popular. It's no longer popular. And I think for a brand to be successful, you have to be bringing out something new. You have to be ahead of the times. You have to be creating the newest trend. And this is just like kind of riding the coattails of the trend, but not in a good way. It's like, you know, the, <laughs> the coat is way up in next year and he's on the tails back in last year. So um, I don't like this palette. I'm, I'm just, I think I had really high hopes and expectations for this brand as well. And I think that is why I'm so disappointed in it as well, because, you know, my expectation and hope and desires for this brand were like up here. And I feel like it is hitting like way down here. And I think that's another reason why I am kind of, I'm bashing this brand a little bit because, I'm just really, I'm really disappointed. I'm really underwhelmed and it's just not hitting the mark for me. And when a brand brings out like new releases, like when it's the first release from a brand, like it's got to be something amazing. Like it's got to be something good. It's got to catch the, the audience's attention. Like it has to be like groundbreaking. And he came out with wipes and a makeup removal spray to start off with. And then this collection, which I just feel like it's just so last year, even the year before, because these are like steel and magnificent metals and everyone is kind of really over that. Um, and then we have eyeliners, which I mean, every brand I think should have a good eyeliner, but at the same time, it's nothing revolutionary. <laughs> He's got a black and a brown. I would have liked to see maybe some interesting colors in this as well to, um, you know, complement the palette. And I uh, just want to see this, the eyeliner pen, I can't see whether it's, um, it kind of looks like it might be a felt tip, but it could be a brush tip. So I can't really comment on that either, but I hate, I hate felt tip liners. I just find felt tips bleed on me like crazy. So if this is a felt tip, again, I just, I, 
I would have liked to see maybe one of each, like how M Cosmetics came out with, when they brought their eyeliners out, they came out with both a brush tip option and a felt tip option. And then I think they came out with a couple of different thicknesses in the pen as well, which I think that is a better option to bring out like for an eyeliner collection than just this. We've got a black brown gel pencil and we have a black liquid liner. I, I just, this, brand is so much it's so missing the mark for me but at the same time I think that it will probably sell really well because uh, Patrick Star is really popular and he has a really big like audience so I think his audiences are just going to buy this for the hell of it and I don't know what these imprints in the pans are I'm a little bit confused by the imprints in the pan because I don't really understand wait let me see what the name of the palette is visionary eyeshadow palette yeah i don't really understand what the imprints in the pans are i don't know whether that is patrick star's logo or what it reminds me a little bit of shrek like i'm getting gingerbread man vibes from this palette with these little imprints i, I just kind of i just really don't get it i really don't get it yeah we're starting off quite negative on me today. There's a lot. I have a lot to say this week about everything. Um, Alice is saying so boring. I 100% agree with you. Carolyn says this seems so last year. Neutrals with a pop of blue. Yes, 100% agree with you. Uh, also, the packaging is ugly. It has house labs all over it, all over again, uh, but worse. I am inclined to agree with you. Yeah, I don't. I don't love the packaging. Um, let me see the palette. Yeah, it's that very. It's kind of that um, millennial pink, but like chrome version of it. Um, I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite. Um, <laughs> Alice is saying it's the least visionary palette ever, and I would have to agree with you. Have to agree with you. When I hear the word visionary, I think that this brand is someone that's at ahead of the pack. Like they're the ones that are creating the the trends. Um, and this is definitely not. This is definitely not visionary at all. Okay. I, I don't want to do this, but moving on to rant two of the day, this is the new collection from Wayne Goss. So he is coming out with the luxury eye palette in Imperial Topaz. And then we also have some coal eyeliner pencils in three shades. I have a lot to say about this palette. <laughs> I have a lot to say. Um, and I did watch I did watch Wayne Goss's video. I watched his launch video and I kind of wish I didn't because I have so much to say after watching that video because I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell the whole time? So this is a six pan palette. It is a very neutral palette. Um, let me find the swatches. I will say this looks beautiful. It swatches beautifully. I think it's a really nice, beautiful, neutral palette. I, I get very bridal vibes from it. Um, I think it would be like the perfect like bridal palette. I think it's I think it's a beautiful palette, but I hate the design of the palette itself. I hate the like I just <sighs> um, the fact that it is six pans in this ginormous palette like these pans are huge i think they're like 2.5 grams or something each like there's so much eyeshadow in these pans it's ridiculous now wayne goss in his video said that he included a black in there he knows black is not the most popular color to have in palettes but he included the black in there because of his push liner technique which i agree it looks great I mean, it gives definition to the eyes, but you can also do the same thing with like a gel um, eyeliner pen or like not a gel eyeliner pen, like a gel eyeliner pencil. Um, any kind of liner, you could run that along your top lash line. Um, when you're pushing eyeshadow, like when you're building up a lot of eyeshadow onto a brush, the way that he described, particularly black as well, you can get a lot of fallout. Um, and then he said that he's going to include a black in every single palette. Like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> like, what is, I, I just don't understand the, the, the philosophy behind putting a black in every single palette. He said, I don't really care what you guys think. I don't care what you say, but I am going to be putting a black in every single palette because that's what I want. And I was like, yes, that's great. It's your brand. Like, you do, you boo. But... 
if you are going to be losing sales and if your audience is saying we do not want to black in every single palette, maybe maybe you should listen to them. Um, so there's that. Uh, I don't think having a black in every single palette is a good idea, particularly when it is this big. Like by the time he comes out with the next palette, people aren't even going to be having a dip in this black. Like it's insane the amount of black eyeshadow that you would end up in your collection if you purchased every single like edition of these palettes from Wayne Goss. So one, I hate the idea of having a black in every single palette, particularly when they are this big. They are so big. I think that he would be better off just doing his normal palettes, um, like having the normal palettes, like whatever way that he wants without the black. And I think he should come out, which, particularly if he's so well known, like he he alluded to in his video for his push liner technique with black eyeshadow. I think he should come out with an individual black. I think he should come out with an individual black and be like, this is the black of your dreams. This is the blackest black you'll ever get. This is the best black to do the push liner technique because it doesn't get full. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. Like, I think that would be the best way for him to advertise his black. I think he's going to be losing a lot of sales on these palettes because they have a black in every single palette. I think people might get one. And then when the next one comes out, they might be like, oh, I don't really need another black. Like I haven't even touched the black that's in the one that I got. Um, I do think that like black can make your eyeshadow look look beautiful. Like it can give that really like sultry kind of sexy feel to it when you add a little black to it. But there are people that don't use black. There are so many people that would love to support Wayne Goss and um, want to buy these palettes, but they, they, they won't sheerly because it has a black in it. Like... Only because it's got a black in it, I think he will lose a lot of sales. And then if he comes out with a reasonable palette with black, I just don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's thinking. And then <laughs> that's my deal on the black. I like I use black eyeshadow occasionally, but I just don't. I don't use it every single time. I don't push black eyeshadow into my like lash line. I prefer to just use like a black eyeliner pen or like a gel line of pencil or something like that and I just put it into my waterline that way as opposed to using a shadow. I do think that the technique that he's talking about, it can make the, the eyes look really beautiful. It can open them up. Um, but I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. Then he proceeded to say that he came out with big pans and square pans because he is sick of seeing, well, he said he came out with really big pans because he has used eyeshadow palettes where he hasn't been able to fit his brush in the eyeshadow pan. How big are these brushes that he is using on people's eyes? Like, seriously, I've never had an eyeshadow brush that cannot fit into an eyeshadow pan. I've maybe got one eyeshadow palette where I struggle to fit an eyeshadow brush into the pan, and that is my Bare Minerals Aurora Lights palette where the palette, the pans are tiny. But even then, I can still make my eyeshadow brush fit into the pan. So I think that's the most stupidest thing that I've ever heard, that he can't fit eyeshadow brushes into most pans in an eyeshadow palette. Then the next thing he said was he came out with them being really nice and big with lots of product in it because, you know, people get sick of seeing this horrible dip in their palettes. I don't know about you, but seeing a dip in an eyeshadow is a Project Panda's dream. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I've, I've never heard anyone say that they don't like seeing a dip in their eyeshadows. And he said that because they're so big and they're, because they've got so much product in them, instead of just like dipping your brush into one particular spot in the pan, you can go all around the outside and you'll never get the dip in the pan and all that jazz. But um I think that square pans are harder to, like, you can't get to the edges. Round pans are definitely a lot lot easier to get, um, definitely a lot easier to get your brush, like, all around the edges. Like, square pans are so hard to pan because you can't get the product or you can't get your brush nicely into the corner here. So I just, I feel like he came up with this palette and then he thought, shit, this might be kind of hard to advertise and like promote to my, my fan base. Like what kind of, what can I come up with that will help advertise it? And then he just came up with all this bullshit. <laughs> 
He came up with all this crap um, to try and like sing the praises of this palette that he came up with. And I just don't think it was necessary. I don't think that he needed to carry on with, you know, the, the horrible dip and not being able to fit my eyeshadow brushes in there and all that. Like just say, this is my palette. This is what I've come up with. I like it because I think as a makeup artist, like it will create all these different kind of amazing, beautiful looks. Like he didn't have to go right into the detail of like, you know, the dip and not being able to fit my eyeshadow brushes in the pans and all that. I think that's, I think that's some of the stupidest things I've ever heard from, from someone when they have released a palette. Um, so that's my rant on that. Um, I, I, I will say, like, before anyone, like, jumps on the, you know, hating Bettina bandwagon for bashing Wayne Goss, I really like Wayne Goss. Like, I think he's a really good artist. I think he has really good points. But sometimes when I watch some of his videos, I just think he's a little bit out of touch. Um, I just think that there's some things that I just really disagree with him on. I think he's a great artist. I think artistry wise, he does a really good job, but sometimes there's just some videos I watch of his where I'm like, what are you saying? Like, I just think he's a little bit out of touch sometimes, but I do like, I do appreciate him. And he is one of the OGs on like makeup beauty YouTube. And like, I think he's kind of like one of the, the flag bearers for us, but Sometimes I'm just like, man, what if what have you been what have you been smoking? <laughs> and then these are the um, the pencil liners, and these are coal pencil liners. So I'm assuming that these might be a little bit stiffer. Um, I think I kind of zoned out by the time he started talking about these pencils. Um, so I can't 100 remember whether he said they were super creamy or whether he said that they were a bit stiffer. Um, but being a cold pencil, they're generally a little bit stiffer and you kind of have to warm them up on the back of your hand sometimes if you want them to be a little bit more creamy. So I like I was this close to buying the palette as well just to give it a try, but I just I just can't I just can't support the tomfoolery. I just can't. Um Okay, what are you guys saying about this palette? Carolyn says, I was disappointed with this. I don't like the black pen. I don't do liner. Wouldn't, I won't be buying it because it's 55 US dollars. Yeah, and in conversion, it works out to be, it's like almost $100 for, I think maybe it's even more um, for a six pen eyeshadow palette. Um, I don't get, I don't get that either. And the pans being so large when it's only six pan palette. Um, I feel like I have similar color stories to this with my Charlotte Tilbury quads. Alice says it's pretty arrogant to tell people how they have to use this palette. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Like it is like, it's an eyeshadow palette. People can use it however the hell they want. They could, they could use it. They, they could use the black as blush if they wanted to. Like stop telling people how to use your makeup. Um, good morning. Good morning, beautiful. It's so good to see you. Villanelli has joined us. Um, so good to see you. Uh, I 100% agree with you, Bettina. Being a black uh, shadow as liner would run on me because I need to use eye drops multiple times a day. That's also a really good point, Carolyn. If you do have, um, if you do have watery eyes or anything like that, um, a powder would be more likely to um, run on you. Like the powder, black eyeshadow would be good if you're like using it over the top of something to set it. Like if you have like a gel eyeliner pen or something like that and you want to set it so it lasts longer, it would be good that way. But if you have watery eyes or if you need to use eye drops or anything like that, yeah, it's going to run everywhere. You're going to look like a hot panda by the end of the day. Uh, so these palettes will expire before we ever get close to using it up. 100%, 100%. Um, is it more catered to an artist rather than us me consumers? I love Wayne Goss too. I'm not bashing him. I just think this palette is got, I just don't think this palette is going to suit me. And I think that might have been like the way that he approached it. Um, I think he may have brought out this palette from his artistry experience and been like, this is the perfect palette. Like this is my ideal palette that I would want in my kit. And then he's actually gone like, wait, how am I actually going to try and convince my followers on YouTube and my fans to buy this palette? So I think he may have designed the palette in two split minds. Um, it's very on brand for him, but at the same time, I don't know whether it's very like, in keeping with what's popular at the moment. Um, he got that middle-aged white man sense of self-importance. 
<laughs> yes, he does a bit, doesn't he? Um, and Darlene says he wants black in every palette. Yes, we were just talking about that. That was the first thing that I was raving about when we started talking about this. I just... I would be interested to see what his sales are going to be like with this palette, um, whether there's going to be like a big spike with like the first palettes that he releases and then after that whether it's going to be like drop off really quickly. Um, and I'd also be interested to see, I didn't really look through the comments on his videos, but I would be interested to see what the comments were like on his videos um, and whether there was a lot of people, you know, <laughs> reading through his bullshit. Hang on. Just got to mute you guys for a second. Um, I think he designed for me and his mum's age group. He said that in his release video. Yeah, that's um, – that's um, a good point. Um, I'm curious if this palette could be a face palette. Um, I think maybe to a certain extent it could be. Um, like some of them I think could be nice highlighters um, and maybe you might even, if you had paler skin tone, you might even be able to use, well, you could use this one as a highlighter and maybe as a blush. This one would look nice as a blush on deeper skin tone. But even if you're going to use it as a face palette, I think you're still going to, like if you're buying it for the purpose of a face palette, um, the black is still going to, you know, stump you. Even even with the older audience, um, I don't know whether I really, like you'd have to keep the black pretty close to the eye. Otherwise I would find, like I think you would find that it would transfer. If you're just using an eyeshadow, um, if you have like really, um, like hooded lids as as you age like your eyelids get more hooded and like the skin starts to droop down I, I would imagine that you would find the black transferring a bit in in like your eyelid folds if you are putting too much black on you'd have to keep it very close to your um your lash line anyway so I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch and see <laughs> what he comes out with in his next palette. But um, I don't know whether I can support them if he's gonna bring out a black in every single palette. <laughs> I don't know whether I can support it. I'm just. I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't buy into that. I would have thought the coal pencils would have been enough for liner. And I agree with you. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, why, why do we need black eyeshadow? Like he is, he is promoting so heavily his push liner technique with the black eyeshadow. But then he also releases a, um, um, he also releases like the coal pencils. I don't know why we need both. Like I would have thought that it would have been more like one or the other. Um, like if he's so so proud and so like you know i used a push liner technique on all of my clients why would you then bring out a coal eyeliner pencil as well um <laughs> stevie says sorry i'm watching with hardly any sound with my family okay that's all right i'll keep it quiet for you <laughs> um right kylie has launched her lip blush lip kits we have four kits launching on the 31st of July, so they're already out. Let's see what these colors look like. These actually look not too bad. Um, you would end up looking like a panda with transfer. Yes, I agree. And like Carolyn said with the like the eye drops, I think I, I don't know whether I yeah. I don't know whether I agree with the <laughs> bush liner technique. I'll have to try it on. Um, a client one day that has like heavy eyelids and see what it, see what it happens throughout the day. Um, some of these I don't mind. Mm, these look a little bit too orange for my liking, like orangey nudes, and I'm just not really a fan of orangey nudes. I like more like a movie tone, Marby tone, Marby tone. Um, yeah, they're all right. I never really go out of my way to buy anything from. Kyla Cosmetics, just because it's too hard and I couldn't be bothered. There's things that I would rather buy. 
Alrighty. <laughs> Rant number three. This one's not going to be very long. Um, so this is new from Scott Barnes. It 100% looks like L'Oreal, like 100%. Um, I saw this, like when I was scrolling through, I saw this and I was like, oh, L'Oreal is coming out with like a new summer collection. And then I was like, wait a minute, that says Scott Barnes on it. These, these look really cheap. I don't know. I, I, I know he's all about the simplistic packaging and, you know, he's more like, you know, simple stuff because I'm a makeup artist and I want it to be simple. But um, these look like drugstore brands. These look like I'd find them in um, <laughs> um, these look like I would find them in Priceline. Um, yes, they are definitely not L'Oreal prices, Carolyn. Uh, these are 25 US dollars for the mini palette. So you get five eyeshadows for um, 25 US dollars and the bronzers Holy shit, these are 55 US dollars for these. These would have to be pretty big for the price to be justified. These are huge. These are huge. And I would imagine, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that this like sun is just an overspray. Um, God, I hate this dude. He's insufferable. Yeah, he can be a bit much, can't he? He's, he's, he's very over the top when um whenever he's doing stuff um okay we briefly spoke about this last week but i'm not i'm not going to talk about it again because we haven't really got much more information about each individual product so i'm just going to skip over it until we actually maybe we can do we have more information on Fenty Skin? Oh, it is refill. Wait, can you buy a refill? Oh, oh my gosh. It is refillable. You guys know how much I love refillable stuff. Um, yes, yes. Um, hate overspray, you end up scraping up. Yeah, like uh, a couple of uses and the overspray is gone. And then the product looks different. Like when you swatch it in store and you like include the overspray with your swatch, it looks beautiful. And then after a couple of uses, you lose it all. And the product ends up looking different. Okay, so this is the Total Cleanse Ur. Um, this is 25 US dollars. So this is a two-in-one cleanser and makeup remover that gives you that delicious deep clean you deserve. You better wash your face morning and night, y'all. <laughs> uh, this removes makeup, oil, dirt, and pollution without stripping skin or drying you out. Purifies pores and helps fight shine long after you've rinsed it off. Oil-free, non-condomogenic. I always struggle with that word. And for all skin types. So we have Barbados Cherry, Ginkgo Biloba, Green Tea, Fig, and Quince. Oh, there's Quince in it. Interesting. Um, just an FYI for those of you that haven't tried it. <laughs> Quince paste with cheese is the bomb.com. Um, it is amazing. So... Yeah, it's got a few, you know, different ingredients in there. It's a cleanser, like really, at the end of the day. It's just a cleanser. And it's 25 US dollars for a cleanser as well. And it's only 105, 40, 145 mils, which I think that's a little bit pricey for a cleanser. Um, 25 US dollars, it's like getting up there probably like $30, $40 um, for 145 mils. That's expensive. That's very expensive. Then we have uh, the Fenty Skin Stir Art. <laughs> um, start R routine. Um, step two of the Fenty Skin Starter routine. Okay, this is the fat water pore defining toner and skin serum. Um, this is 28 US dollars, which is also very expensive. This is a two-in-one toner serum combo that targets pores, 
improves the look of dark spots, brightens, smooths, and fights shine. Um, ain't dry here. Our alcohol-free formula won't strip skin or dry you out. It's called fat water because it's thick. Its unique texture measures – sorry, its unique texture means you can pour it into your hand to apply. No cop has needed equals less waste. Okay, I like the idea that – they're promoting that you can just pour it into your hands and you don't need a cotton pad, but I still don't like the name of it. <laughs> I still don't like the name of it. Um, we have niacinamide, we have Barbados cherry, Australian lemon myrtle and witch hazel, Japanese raisin tea, uh, cactus flower, green tea and fig. Um, I know it doesn't have alcohol in it, but I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I apply, when I use products with witch hazel, I find it dries my skin out. So I don't know. I know it doesn't have alcohol in it, but it does have witch hazel in it. So there's that one. I still don't like the name of the product. I don't get it. And I don't think it matches. I don't think it sits nicely in with the other products, like the name. I just think it's a bit clunky when it's compared to the other names of the um, the products in the line. And the last one is the Hydra Visor. Uh, invisible moisturizer and SPF. So this is 35 US dollars. So once again, quite expensive. And this tube looks tiny. This tube looks very tiny. We have, um, how much is this? So it's a two in one sunscreen and moisturizer that defends and brightens skin while reducing the look of pores. So we have a broad spectrum SPF 30 protection, no chalkiness here. Pink tinted cream applies invisibly on all skin tones, plays well with makeup, boosts and brightens skin, coral reef friendly, earth conscious and refillable. Okay, there's a few things that I want to say about this. First of all, it's SPF 30 and I know Alice has just said this, that um, unfortunately Fenty SPF is only 30 plus in US, unlikely to be good enough in Australia. You make a very good point, Alice, um, and I always like to point this out when we're talking about US products. For those of us that is, for those of us that are in Australia, SPF level thirty in other other countries doesn't cut it in Australia. It barely even gets our ranking in Australia. We have extremely strict SPF rules, rightly so. And I thank the Australian, I thank the whatever the Consumer Goods Association or whatever it is that has made the rules um, for making our rules so strict. Because I am pasty as hell. We all know that. Um, and I burn so easy, like 10 minutes in the sun and I start burning. So I really appreciate our rules being so ridiculously strict when it comes to SPF. So this SPF 30 in America, if it was going to be stocked in Sephora here, I would say that they probably wouldn't even be able to say that it has SPF in it or it would just say like sunscreen moisturizer and they wouldn't even be able to put the SPF rating on it, they would have to go through the hoops, jump through all the hoops to get the, the rating on the packet here in Australia. Um, another thing I want to say is I do really appreciate that this is uh, coral reef friendly. They've actually considered that. It doesn't contain any oxybenzones or octanate, octanoxate. I don't know how to say that word either. And then it says it's earth conscious and it is refillable. Oh my gosh, I love that um, it is refillable. Um, and Fenty, Fenty seems to be the brand that everyone looks at. So if they start bringing out more products in their range that are refillable, particularly with their skincare, I hope that it catches on really well. And I hope that other brands go, that's really popular in their line. The fact that it is refillable, we need to start looking at something like this as well. I personally am not going to pick this up. Well, another thing that I want to say is when they say no chalkiness, it's pink tinted. I do, I am more inclined to believe that because as we know, Rihanna is a dark skin queen. Um, she would have 100% not let this go. I think I'm just making speculation. I think that she would not let this like leave and with her brand name on it, if it showed up like chalky on darker skin tones. So I would be more inclined to trust the fact that this would not show up chalky on darker skin tone um, as opposed to, you know, like some other brands. Um, what do we have in this? We have Kalahari Melon, we have Niacinamide, we have Hyaluronic Acid and Aloe and Bayoba. 
Um, so it's got some decent ingredients in there, but as I said, the SPF, like it's going to be fairly, um, it's going to be barely anything, but I love, like I love that it is refillable. I absolutely love that. I think it's a good move for Fenty and I think the fact that it is refillable might get them a lot more sales. Yeah, here's a little, you know, a little demonstration of it being, so the little cartridge comes out. Granted, it's still plastic, but it is, you know, one small move um, and hopefully we see more things like that um, coming out. Uh, fat water, who, who knew water could be, <laughs> could be fat, it's bad, bad um, name. Um, while it's not strong enough SPF for us, though, it might be good being a um, spray to reapply through the day. I don't think any of us reapply through the day when wearing a full face of makeup. Yes, um, I don't. <laughs> I'll just admit it right now. I don't. Um, I do if I'm, like, outside, um, but if I'm just, you know, going to work, um, I don't. I don't reapply. Alrighty. Some new products coming out from Dragon Beauty. Now, I will say there's some controversy about this, but I haven't quite read into it all that much. Something about the component, and actually there may even be some information about it in the comments. Um, something about, I saw somewhere something about the components and it being really similar to a small indie brand, but I haven't read anything further about it, but I'm not quite, I'm not, not hundred percent surprised. So these are some new liquid lipsticks coming out from Dragon Beauty. So Nikita Dragon owns this brand. We have five new shades. Um, I'm going to come out right out and say it. I absolutely hate some of these names. Um, and the colors, they look all right. I wouldn't buy any of this stuff. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Nikita Dragon, so I definitely wouldn't buy anything from her brand. Uh, these two colors look really similar on some of the skin tones. I get that they have like slightly different undertones, but they look really, really similar. Um, then we have a red, we've got a hot pink, and we have a black. So the names, like we've got Blackmail, we've got Pussy Stunt, we've got Horacha, um, Horchata, sorry, Horchata, um, Nikita, and Dragon Blood. <laughs> Was this the trashy notes? Yes. Um, I... I just don't, why, why, what happened to like, you know, normal names we used to have back in the day? Um, all these like weird names, I don't know. And once again, I just feel like the names don't really like sit well with each other. I mean, I don't like it. don't like it. Some of these look like they have been layer swatched as well, particularly when you see it on this deeper skin tone here. Um, you, there's like this ring of like dryness around them. So it looks like they've been swatched and then like swatched over that again and then the photo is taken. So it's been like layered up, but then it looks like it has been, might have been swatched and photographed wet. Um, I don't know whether it's the fact that it has dried down and they're swatched over it again or whether it's just like a super thick swatch and there's like edges to it. <laughs> she thinks she's being edgy. Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, she thinks she's being a lot of things. <laughs> Some new products from Patrick Ta. Now, this is a lip collection I can get behind. This color looks beautiful. I saw this and I was like, oh. <gasps> It looks stunning. Look at that. Look at that bright pink, hot pink. Oh, my gosh. It looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
Um, the more I see stuff from Patrick Tarr, the more I'm like, I need to get some stuff from this brand and try because there's been a few things from him lately that I have been super interested in, um, like the the blush duos um, and the the lipstick. Some of the other colors in the lipstick range, I was like, um, you can blame Too Faced for, Pat, for trashy names. Yes, we certainly can, can't we? I always get confused between Patrick Tar and Patrick Star. <laughs> I totally, I've never really thought about that before, but I can totally see that now. I always get, I keep tripping over my words when I say um, Patrick Star and Jeffrey Star. I keep like going to say the, the Jeffrey when I'm talking about Patrick, but. Obviously, I mean Patrick Star. Um, yes, Too Faced, uh, yes. And I reckon Nas as well. I think Nas probably started it before um, Too Faced. Too Faced, like the trashy names, but Nas started like the, the, the sexualizing names. But yes, this is beautiful. This color is so beautiful. I would probably only wear it like once in a blue moon, but she is stunning, absolutely stunning. And I don't think, where's the, it doesn't like, it doesn't seem to, it's a matte suede. So it does look like it emphasizes texture, but not like a super, super lot, like a really dry, suck your lips, dry moisture kind of matte. Alrighty. We have a sneak peek from um, XO Beauty, which is, Shamexo. Looks like it's going to be a fairly neutral palette. It's going to be 12 eyeshadows. Interested to see what it looks like and how it swatches. This color here looks really interesting. Interesting. We will keep posted on that one. Then we have a new eyeshadow palette coming out from Violet Voss. This is the Essential 2 palette. So this is a 10 pan eyeshadow palette. We have four mattes and six shimmers. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like that neutral pop of blue, but it's also got a few purples in there. So it's not really anything new either. I'm just going to jump on over to the Violet Voss Instagram to see if we have any swatches. Okay, no swatches as yet. Unfortunately, that's all right. We might have to talk about this one later when they release the swatches. But I will say um, these purple shimmers look really pretty. <laughs> and then the, the, the brown, the neutral um, mattes look really nice too. But I'm not going to buy it because I don't need it. Don't need it. Uh, the rice wash we've already spoken about previously. I have a feeling we've spoken about these um, Vizier palettes as well, but I'm going to talk about them again because I don't remember. <laughs> this one here, this is like the, the pinky kind of purpley palette. I kind of really like it, except that there's a few colors in it that are just a touch too pink for my liking, but I still think it's really pretty. And then we have this more neutrally one. This one is, these are 30 US dollars each. And you can get some of these smaller palettes from um, Sephora Australia. These ones might already even be there. Um, this color solstice is really nice. I'm getting deja vu. I feel like we have already spoken about these and, oh, they are available now. So we must have already spoken about these because I'm getting deja vu. I feel like we've definitely spoken about these. Um, looks like ABHM Reezy. Oh, yeah. That's actually, I, I can kind of see that. I see that a little bit. Um, Exo Beauty, she's getting married, I say, or wedding palette. Oh, I didn't know that she was getting married. Um, I was just going to say that. Um, I did not know that she was getting married. Um, I know that she's been, I think her, her and her partner have been engaged for a very long time. Um, Beauty Bay has Viziart in Australia. Yes, yes. 
Beauty Bay is so good. Love a good Beauty Bay to purchase. All right, new products from House Labs. And I must say, <laughs> this is probably the most exciting thing, in my opinion, that House Labs have come out since they've launched. <laughs> and these are eyeliners, and they are in a crap load of colors. There's some colors in here that look beautiful, um, like these purpley colors, even these goldy ones and the green ones. These are beautiful. Um, can we get these here? Good question. I think House Labs is on Amazon, aren't they? So maybe you can get them through Amazon. Let me check. My internet might be really slow, which is not ideal. Um, while we're, while we're waiting for that to load, I'm going to, um, I'm just, I, I just, because I'm really proud of my, <laughs> of my um, achievements. Um, hang on. I just want to share my custom emojis with you guys <laughs> that I worked so hard on yesterday. You're probably not even going to um, see these. Let me know if you can see them. There we go. There's my little emojis. Um, speaking of trashy names, um, here's a dumpster fire for you. Um, there we go. Oh, you can't really see them very clearly, can you? Anyway, like I said at the start of the video, um, there's custom emojis there for you guys if you are a member. So those are my, um, my how many have I got? I've got six. Five, I cannot count, five new custom emojis um, that you guys can use. If you are a member, you just need to click on the, the, the little smiley face next to your keyboard when you're typing in a comment and you should get them because, I don't know, I'm just really excited for them. Um, right, let's see if... Um, who, darling, why the claw hand, not a good shot. I was thinking the same thing. I think it's just because Lady Gaga, I think one of her, one of her album covers or is it Monster? It might be Monster. I think one of her album covers, she had the claw hand. Um, maybe it was, okay. We offer free standard shipping on orders over 50 for US and 75 US for uh, international. So you they do ship internationally, um, but you have to spend over 75 US dollars. And does it say, does it say um, it's $12.95 standard shipping for international if you are wanting to buy? Which international countries do they ship to? Uh, Australia is on the list. So they do ship to Australia through the House Labs website. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure you can get them through Amazon because I'm sure that's where they originally launched um, on Amazon. So I think you can get them through Amazon if you have, I think if you have like a Prime membership or something, you can get free international shipping. But yeah, I don't think the claw, the claw definitely doesn't, do them justice. I think it really takes away from the actual um, swatches. But some of them look really nice, really, really nice. Like I said, this is the first thing that House Labs has come out with that I'm actually interested in, that I think is actually done really well. So kudos to House Labs for doing something good for once, <laughs> bringing out some interesting products. Who would have thought it would have just been colored eyeliners? Patrick Starr, that's how you bring out some eyeliners. <laughs> and Wayne Goss. Wayne Goss brought out eyeliners too, didn't he? Yeah, Patrick Starr and Wayne Goss. Bring out a whole collection of beautiful different colors and you'll, you'll get me. Bokeh Beauty have come out with a new style. This is Giselle. This is a medium density uh, synthetic fibers. Um handmade bound to an invisible band for maximum comfort you can reuse these for up to 20 uses um 
And yeah, they look really nice. They look really, really nice. Let's see if they have. These are only 12 um, Australian dollars. I think, uh, so Bouquet Beauty is owned by Jacob from, I think his channel is And That's Jacob or That's Jacob. I think his lashes are really reasonably priced for Australian lashes. Like lashes in Australia, you get a price line and you spend like $25 on one pair of lashes. So I think his are really reasonably priced and he does have affiliate codes that will bring the, the price down. So well, not affiliate codes, but codes that will bring the price down if you are interested. So yes, I think he's doing a great job. I think he's doing a great job. Um, that's not bad shipping actually yeah i agree i agree um normally it's I've, I've seen some international sites and you've got to spend like 150 us dollars to get free shipping so i think 75 is a really good deal uh pretty easy to spend that much converting money yes definitely 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 and like once you actually how much are those eyeliners did we see um I just saw something that just caught my eye. Okay. Oh, I forgot to say these are long wearing waterproof and smudge proof. So if you are with a quick dry down time. So if you like to smudge your eyeliner, they're probably not going to be good for that. But if you do have um, like weepy watery eyes, these are waterproof. So they're probably going to be really good for you if you um, if you have sensitive eyes or you rub your eyes a lot or your eyes water a lot. Um, these ones will be good. Um, and there's different different finishes as well, um, matte, metallic, and shimmer finishes. How much are they? Um, because you know, if they're if they're like twenty dollars, you only have to buy three and you get free shipping. Sorry guys, we're jumping around a lot today, aren't we? I mean that's all right. Not about you guys but i hate it when brands have pop-ups on their site like as soon as you go into their site and something pops up it's really annoying oh it doesn't even have the price on there that's annoying uh arriving at eighth sorry the fourth of august i always forget that you know america's dates are backwards does it have the price on this one no, it doesn't have the price anywhere. I'd imagine that they're probably going to be maybe like 20 Australian dollars. Um, I'm going to skip over the Color Rain release for now because um, there's better pictures on trend mood with swatches and everything. So we'll talk about it when we get to there. Um, I have a suit. Whoop, no price I can see. Yes, I can't find a price, which is annoying. I have super hooded eyes with oily lids. If it's not an actual liquid that dries, it is probably is, – it is Oh my gosh, I cannot talk today. And it is properly waterproof. It won't stay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hmm. Um, okay, so Pure coming out with another collection. I feel like they just came out with something. Was it the, yeah, it was the Royal Beauty Christie collection, wasn't it? Uh, this is the five-piece defense collection. So it features uh, skincare, makeup, and skin treats. Okay. So we have the defense 12-piece anti-pollution eyeshadow palette. Okay. The downtown detox antioxidant anti-pollution mask. The matte mist anti-pollution mattifying setting spray with charcoal that's a lot of words in your title um on point waterproof liquid eyeliner pen and the submerge overnight detox anti-pollution moisture riser <laughs> um okay so this is all supposed to be anti-pollution it's supposed to help you defend your skin from environmental stresses such as pollution i've never seen this um i've never seen this kind of technology in eyeshadow very interesting i don't know whether i don't know i haven't really seen or read much research about 
anti-pollutant type skincare products or makeup products. So I don't really know what it does or if it works or anything like that. Um, the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner smudges on me. Oh my gosh. God, that sucks. Um, I use them in my waterline um, gel pencils. Gel pencils. I like gel pencils. <laughs> I'm a fan of gel pencils. Then we have a new palette from Morphe. This is the 35C Everyday Chic Artistry Palette. I don't like this. I think it's a little bit... Um, I don't know. It's just a bit there. Like it is very muted. I feel like this should have been launched under Morphe 2, which it may have been, but it doesn't say for certain whether um, it is. But I feel like this is a very kind of like Morphe 2-esque palette. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, Morphe have like a, you know, a baby brand, which is Morphe 2 now, which is supposed to be more like, you know, your everyday no makeup makeup kind of looks um i feel like this would have gone well with that but yeah i don't like it it's too muted um okay another 35 pen palette yes i know and it's a 35 pen palette which also means that i won't be buying it because it's not happening <laughs> I'm struggling to find spaces it is for what I've got, let alone um, a big 35 pan palette. All right. Wrong time to bring out anti-pollution. No one going out anywhere. You make a good point. You make a good point. I feel like it's kind of the wrong time to bring out anything at the moment, but... Um, you know, if you've been working on it for the past year or so, you can't just have it sitting, like, waiting for the day that, you know, a vaccine is made. Like, you, otherwise, you, the product's probably going to be expired by then. Um, all righty. This is where we're up to. These are the new highlighters that are coming out in the Stacey Marie uh, Be Perfect round three collaboration i think it is so we have a whole heap of highlighters coming out in the collection i won't be getting these highlighters but but um let me jump on over to the be perfect instagram page you best believe i'm probably going to be getting the palette because i have the first edition of this palette and i love it actually i think it's yeah it's like right here this palette here the Carnival palette round one. Um, this is the first edition of the collaboration. I love it. Um, so I really want to get the next. This will be round three. Um, so a few things to note though about round three is it is still going to be big and bulky packaging, which drives me mental. So many people have been complaining about how big and bulky the packaging on this one because like it is super thick. And it is like really big and chunky. And the like the pans aren't even that big. Like the pans are quite small. Oh, I just put eyeshadow everywhere. The pans are quite small, but yeah, it is like super thick. Um, it drives me crazy how thick this palette is. Um, and the second edition of that palette, so like the XL palette was even bigger again. And it had double ups between the first edition and the second edition. So I think there was like 10 eyeshadow crossovers this one isn't supposed to have any double ups um, we've already seen a few colors sneak peek i hate it when brands do this like it's been going for over a week now and we've only seen three colors from the palette and the highlighters i hate it when brands do that um what else was i going to say but the palette they confirmed on their instagram someone asked like it, what's the packaging going to be like and they said it's going to be the same thickness as the other two palettes and I think they said it's going to be the same size as the XL palette but instead of highlighters it's going to be eyeshadows that drives me crazy <laughs> absolutely crazy but I really like the, the first palette that I got so I think I'm going to put that aside and actually buy it because I really like I really like the palette that I have. 
but I just got to find somewhere to store it, which is going to be a nightmare. All righty. Um, I'm in Melbourne, still in lockdown, going a bit stir crazy. Oh my gosh, girl, I feel for you so much. Everyone down in Melbourne, um, yeah, I feel for you. I hope you're okay. And I can imagine, like, even when Queensland was in lockdown, but we're still, like, allowed to go out and do a few things, um, I was I was going crazy too. Like, I was just losing my mind. The only people I saw for, like, eight weeks was my work colleagues and my husband, and I was like, I need to see my friends. I can't do this anymore. Um, yeah, I hope you're okay. S stay safe and look after yourself. Um, this is a new mascara coming out from L'Oreal Palette Paris, and I just wanted to comment on this because I really like the packaging. So this is the Air Volume Mega Mascara. Um, I really like this packaging. It looks like a little, like, hot air balloon. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted to say. Um, we're looking at a harder lockdown too. I'm in Melbourne too. Yeah, it's crazy down in Melbourne. Um, I heard them say they that stricter lockdown conditions are about to be announced for Victoria. Yeah, I know it sucks, but I feel like the quicker that everyone gets on top of it, the quicker we can go back to normal. Um, the packaging looks like a soda pop. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? It looks so good. I really like the packaging. Um Um, I'm fine. Thank you. You do the things you need to do. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's hard though. It's hard, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so this is the new palette that's coming out through Colored Rain. This is the Juicy Boat palette. Now, one thing that I find really interesting about this palette, so we have a big palette, which is, um, 18 shades. But then we have two smaller palettes, and the two smaller palettes are literally the big palette um, cut in two. So we have like this nine pan um, in a smaller palette, and then this set of nine pan in another smaller palette. Um, I kind of really want the umbrella. <laughs> I know that's really stupid. Uh, do we have swatches? Okay, these are the only kind of swatches that we have at the moment. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I kind of love it, but I, I kind of don't, and I can't really figure out why I don't. Uh, maybe it's like these yellowy colors. Um, but I really like this bigger palette and then the two smaller palettes because you can choose what you want. And um, is there a mirror in the bigger palette? Yes, there's a mirror in the bigger palette, but it doesn't look like there's a mirror in the smaller palettes. So... And I like the idea because you can either, if you like this side, um, you can go with that. But if you like this side more, you can go with that in the smaller palette. Um, if you feel like you're not going to use the whole palette, I like it. I like it. But I'm probably not going to buy it, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to buy it. I'm excited to see swatches. Um, let me see if there's any swatches on their Instagram. I want to see swatches on skin. Swatches on skin. Oh, hang on. Wait. Um, I think I just got that wrong. <laughs> I think I definitely just got that wrong. So same palette, just two different types of packaging. So it's not two separate palettes. It's just one palette but in a book form, which is weird. I don't think I like it anymore. Um, I get that it's like a smaller form so it doesn't take up as much room, but having it as the exact same palette is a little bit weird. So there is a, there is a mirror in this, but there's only one mirror mm. 
Yeah, so you can either have it as this or you can have it in the book, but you get the exact same colours in both. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Darlene says, love, hate with this palette. Love the bottom colours. Yeah, I think I'm kind of in the same boat. Like I, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty, but I don't need it. Um, like it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just a bit meh for me. And now that it's not two separate palettes, but it's just one and you can get it in a book form, I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's a little bit weird. Um, Carolyn says, we haven't experienced COVID um, much in my area in Queensland at all. Yeah, I'm the same in my area. Um, we, I don't think we've even had a case yet in my area, touch wood. We had lots of, like, there's lots of people getting tested, like, every single day in my area. And there's people that come into my work and, like, they got tested the day before and haven't got their results back and then come into my work. It drives me mental. Um, yes, I'm waiting for Sydney to explode too. <laughs> it's so scary. Um we're okay, but there's quite a lot of unknown origin cases and that's what's causing the problem. Yeah, I know. It's it's that's the it's the unknown that's scary. Like you don't know where it's come from or who's got it, which is makes it more difficult for you to look after yourself when you don't know like where to not go or who to avoid or where it's coming from. Okay. More additions to, well, this is a collaboration with a different brand. This is House of Silage. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, but it just looks like silage, which isn't, which um, is a byproduct, isn't it? Oh, okay. That's a lipstick. I like that. I like that. Wow. Um, and then I think this is a perfume. So we've got a perfume and a lipstick. Hmm. I really like this lipstick. I really, really like this packaging. Normally I hate bulky packaging, but that is that is cute. I really like that. Um, and the perfume bottle looks cool too. I like this collection. I like it. It's hella expensive and too expensive for a lipstick, but it's really pretty. I like the packaging. I really like the packaging. Um, thankfully, between first lockdown and now, I moved from a two-bedroom high-rise apartment to a four-bedroom townhouse near Mary Creek. Nice, nice. Very pretty case. It is, isn't it? It's so pretty. Um, I'm not going to talk about hair care. I don't want to talk about hair care. <laughs> um, so glad my husband and I are both working from home. So we now have our own offices and are not on top of each other. Oh, that'd be so nice. That'd be so, so such a change as well. I know there's lot, like people that I watch on YouTube and they're, they're like using their kitchen table as their their home office, which I don't know how they can do that. Okay, now I think this is part of that collection. Yes, that's part of that collection. So we'll talk about that later. This, we'll talk about that later because we don't know what that is. <coughs> now, have any of you tried Odin's Eyes? Because everyone, um, Everyone um, keeps talking about it on YouTube at the moment, and I'm interested. I think they're a Swedish brand, Odin's Eye. Um, some of their palettes look really nice, actually. Uh, if perfume bottle was round and the same as the as the top, even better. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, and I'm crossing my fingers Sydney stays under control. Yes, I'm crossing my fingers that everywhere else stays under control and people keep um following the rules and not lying on declarations <laughs> that would be fantastic 
Uh, never heard of them. Uh, no, but I want to try Odin's eyes. Yeah, they're there's they're like a bit of an up and coming brand uh, from Sweden. I've seen a few. Um, thank you, Alice. Yes, they're Swedish. Uh, I've seen a few influencers uh, reviewing them of late, and they seem really nice. The formula. We have a few new mattes coming out from from M Cosmetics. They look nice. Then, uh, uh, are they the, we've already spoken, yeah, we spoke about Propa Beauty last week, I think, or the week before. Uh, let's just get to, straight to the point. <laughs> All those shimmer shades are part of this collection, and this is the new Butterfly Kisses collection coming out from Luxy Beauty. These look stunning. Uh, this Angel Wings and... Crimson Rose and Flower and Sky Flower. Oh, some of these look absolutely beautiful. I love these like duochrome foil shadow. Um, they just get me every time. They're so beautiful. I really like the look of these. <laughs> they look stunning. And then we have some matte shadows. These are from M Cosmetics as well. So these are the 10 new matte colors. Um, Okay, pond water looks beautiful. <laughs> These do look a little bit, I don't know what the word is, patchy, but I, it's just on the edges of the, the swatch. So I assume that they're probably more like a powdery formula and that's why they look like that. Uh, but some of these colors look really pretty. Have any of you tried M Cosmetics? What? I always get this brand and the other M Cosmetics confused. But I think they're, I think they pronounce both of the names the same. Yeah, some of these look really nice. Then we have a new palette coming out. Um, the Nostalgia palette, which is this one in the middle here, coming out from Ace Beauté. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably going to be like a greeny kind of vibe. Um, I'm excited to see what's inside. And we have Lucky Last is the reveal of the Clarity Cosmetics Rain of Color palette. Um, I am really disappointed with what this looks like. I thought that it would be, you know, looking at the packaging, it would be really nice and rainbowy, lots of like rainbow foil colors. Um, it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not what I thought it would be. This color magnolia is probably my favorite. Yeah, I just assumed that it would be lots of like foils because the front of the palette looks really, you know, foily and pretty and rainbowy. But yeah, it's got a lot of a lot of matte colors in them, which they look nice. But yeah, not what I envisaged for the palette, unfortunately. And then I can't believe I thought that this was two palettes. <laughs> I just assumed that it was two palettes, not one palette. But anyway, we figured it out. If I actually read the description, double-sided book format, <laughs> I would have figured it out. <laughs> um, muted mats, yes, yes. All right, let me... I kind of flew through the last little bit, didn't I? I think because <laughs> I got all the rage off my chest right at the start. <laughs> okay. We are done. Let me stop screen sharing. And now is catch-up time. How are you guys going? How has your week been? Um, what have you been up to? Obviously, I know some of us have gone back into lockdown, so we probably haven't been up to March, unfortunately. Um, I feel like nothing interesting has happened this week for me. No. <laughs> My emojis is about it. <laughs> that's the most exciting thing that's happened to me all week is making emojis. <laughs> Oh, and I tie-dyed. Well, I didn't tie-dye. I, I bleach-dyed. I bleach-dyed. 
um, this palette, well, this palette, this shirt um, yesterday. That was my um, my fun funness from yesterday. Um, I nearly killed myself from bleach fumes and my hands. I nearly killed them, my hands because I um, I didn't wear gloves or my respirator, which was a stupid move. Um, Alice is asking thoughts on the new alter ego Artemis palette. I don't want to talk about it because we can't get alter ego in Australia <laughs> and I really want to try them. Uh, where is it? Where is it? I really like the, um, the new palette. Let me go to the webs. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think that they ship to Australia. So I look at the palettes and I'm like, don't even talk to me about those palettes because I really want to try them. But they don't ship to Australia yet. This is the Artemis palette that we're talking about. Uh, it's like, a, what is it? The Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. It's the Metropolis palette dupe. If I was going to get anything from Artemis, from Alter Ego, it'd be their, I think, is it this one? The Natasha Denona Gold palette dupe. Because if I could save myself some dollars and not buy the gold palette and just get the cheaper version uh yeah definitely do that yeah i really want to try some of the alter ego stuff because everyone says it's a really good formula and their palettes are really good and they're good dupes for the natasha denona stuff but they don't ship to australia which is a little bit selfish of them i think <laughs> actually i don't think they ship internationally at all which is um is poor performance, isn't it? Very poor. Um, have you had a haircut? Yes, I did. I got a cut yesterday, cut in colour. It went back um, to purple. Um, I... <laughs> it looks terrible this morning. My hairdresser straightened it for me and it looked beautiful yesterday. Uh, and now it's like my slept in, lived in, uh, I did brush it. I did brush it for you guys, but I did not style it. Uh, so it's it's very kinked. And, but, yes, I went back purple, and she did put some – oh, there we go. You can kind of see it. She did put some foils in, so she did, like, bleached foils. Oh, I'm trying to – opposite. She put, like, some foils in, and she, like, did some bleach foils. So I have, like, um, some, like, lighter and brighter purple bits in here because she, you know, mixed it up a little bit this time. I go to my hairdresser and I'm like, do what you want to do. And <laughs> she gets all excited and comes up with all these ideas. So we did something a little bit different. I don't know. You can't really see it, can you? The lighting in here is not very good. But there are some lighter bits in here and some darker bits because we did like a brighter purple over the foil. I like it. I like it. Uh, but in some lights, it comes up kind of red which is interesting, but that's all right. Um, I'm so worried about what might happen in South Brisbane with those silly girls lying about their travel. I know. Don't even get me started on them. I start raging every time I talk about them and think about them. I just think it's so selfish, <laughs> so selfish. Um, I'm so tempted to try a reshipping service. I used to use, I think it's My US. I don't know if they're still open, um, but I used to use my yet my US and um, Australia Post have one. But when I was using them, you couldn't buy multiple things and they would repackage it. They would simply just like put your new address on the box and like send that package further on. Um, so, yeah, if you want to buy from multiple different places and get it repackaged into one box, uh, I don't think Australia Post does that. But when I was using it, they didn't do it. They simply just, like, forwarded on your package. Um, but it can work out a lot cheaper if you find one that repackages it for you and because um, then you can buy from multiple different places. But then I also found that a lot of, like, Sephora US, for example, they used to you used to be able to buy internationally and ship it to your forwarding service or your, your parcel locker, your box, wherever um, in the US. But then they started blocking international credit cards, which is annoying. So you've got to go through the 
the people and get them to buy it for you. And they always add like a, like a buying fee on top of it, which is annoying. Um, your hair looks nice. I had mine done again on Friday. Always feels better when your regrowth and grays are covered. <laughs> My, <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I just like that, like fresh feeling and like, when you walk out of the hairdresser and the hairdresser has styled your hair and your hair feels really nice and soft and it looks perfect. It, that's like the only time I can achieve you look, <laughs> like a perfectly styled look because I can never re recreate it. That's why I end up with so many hair care products because I'm like, oh, what did you do to make my hair feel so soft? And then I can never do it again at home. Like my perfect, when my hair is like perfectly straight, I can never get it really nice and straight like the hairdresser does. It just always ends up with like this kick in it. Like it kicks the wrong way when I straighten it myself. Um, probably because I always put my hair up and I ruin, ruin the design. Um, yes, I keep I keep commenting on stuff like on Alter Ego's um, stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, when are you going to start shipping internationally? And they never respond to me. Yeah, Alter Ego does not currently ship to international addresses. Disappointing. Disappointing. Poor performance, Alter Ego. Very poor. Some of their stuff looks really good. I wish they shipped internationally. Wish they had me on their PR list. <laughs> that would be even better. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like the Artemis. It's nice. They don't ship internationally currently, which is annoying. I've gotten so fat I can barely get off the couch. Oh, I actually, I will admit, I started like a, a bit of a boot camp um, this past week. So I um, can get my butt off the couch and get exercising because I've been eating terribly. I reckon I gained like 10 kilos or something over isolation when I didn't go anywhere, when all the gyms closed down. I find it really hard to motivate myself to do exercise when I'm at home. <laughs> I'm like, I would rather just eat chocolate and watch Netflix than exercise. Carolyn says, have, um, have you been drinking the fat water? I will say you aren't alone there. I feel bad too. Yeah, I feel like, you know, you get to the point where you're just like, man, it's past the point. I need to do something. That's the point that I got to. I was like, I cannot keep going on like this. I refuse to go and buy bigger clothes. <laughs> I think ISO has like done us all dirty in, in many different ways. Alrighty, we've been here for a while, so I might jump off shortly unless there's any questions or anything that anything else that came out this week that caught your eye that I didn't talk about um, or if you have any questions for me or anything like that. Um, cooking lunch today for the family. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to bleach some more stuff and try not to kill my lungs. Um <laughs> today so you might see some more bleach dye stuff next week <laughs> and I need to film some videos so I've got stuff for you guys to watch this week while you're in ISO if you're in um, Victoria I'm gonna try and bring some videos for you to watch <laughs> um, yeah anyway if you are still here um, and you haven't left already make sure you give it a thumbs up this video um, and if you are or if you caught the the live stream late. Um, the replay will be up in a couple of hours. Um, YouTube has to do all its back end stuff before I can post the video. So it'll be up in a couple of hours. If not, it'll be tomorrow morning. 
Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope you have a fantastic week. If you are in Melbourne, please stay safe and healthy and look after yourself and all that jazz. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of all of you. Um, I'm hoping I'm sending all my positive vibes to you. Um, I'm sending all my positive vibes to everyone that hopefully, you know, Australia can get all this shit under under control again and it doesn't keep getting out of control. Um, and, yeah, if you are traveling or doing anything, don't lie on your declarations um, because the rest of humankind's safety is really important. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I'll see you all next week. If you haven't already, um, hit the subscribe button if you do want to get notified. If you want to join, you can hit the join button and find all the info about the membership levels and all the perks and all that. Um, and you'll get the, the custom emojis if you want to use them in the live streams and all that jazz. So yeah, hit the join button if you want to find the information out about um, the membership. And yeah, I will see you all next week, next Sunday, same time, same place, 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time as per usual. And yeah, have an amazing day. Goodbye, guys.